All right, so Mr. Beast um, built a hundred wells in Africa, attracted much praise, but apparently it also came with much criticism. Check this out. Because the story isn't that Mr. Beast is a Nostradamus, right? It's just based off of historical data, this was gonna happen. He puts out a video where people can't hear or they see, and he's like, hey, I'm Mr. Beast, I fixed it, boom. And well, that's largely got him a lot of praise. There have been people going, yeah, fuck that guy. It's just, uh, you know, performance activism. He's just trying to look like a good guy. This is part of the business. Also, I'm going to disregard that lots of people's lives are made better, because I'm angry. Granted, it would make sense if it was at the system and the world, but I'm also going to direct it towards Jimmy. Mr. Beast, because fuck that guy. And so when he released his new video, I Built 100 Wells in Africa, he, he kind of knew what was going to come. And in that video, he goes to Kenya, Zimbabwe, and other countries to install wells to give people drinking water. Also notably speaking to the local communities, giving their schools new equipment. And Mr. Beast closing his video by encouraging people to donate to the Water is Life campaign at Beast Philanthropy. I know it's weird that a YouTuber has to do all this stuff, but someone's got to do it. And if no one else is, we're going to do it. As you can tell, it really does change the lives of the communities where we build them. And so with that, you know, as expected, he got a lot of praise for doing that, people applauding him for helping so many people using his platform and money for good. But as he predicted, he got some backlash with some saying that he was exploiting vulnerable communities for content. Or some accusing him of being a so-called white savior and arguing he's tackily packaging a myth mostly to children that Africans are helpless, featureless subject of his kindness, that Africa can only be helped by a white celebrity who's amassed immense wealth for. Okay. Okay, so he's white. Who gives two shits? <laughs> you get what I'm saying? You see, this is the problem, right? We have a whole bunch of people that all they care about is perpetuating this continual black versus white. And although, look, racism is a very real thing. It, ha it, it exists. Unfortunately, there's a lot of bigoted people that still exist today, right? That's, that's, that's a no-brainer, right? That's no surprise to anybody, I'm sure. However... Why do we have to take something that Mr. Beast is trying to do just to help the general people of Africa and turn it into another race war? I mean, if you guys are so tired of a white savior and the optics is, oh, Africa is this, you know, impoverished country and it needs help from outside, then why the people in Africa didn't build these wells? I mean, I'm sure you knew that the citizens need water, right? And then we're going to go into the economy. I mean, I, I just don't want to hear it because, again, this is what they don't ever talk about, right? There's so many people in Africa that have the means. They have the means. I mean, I'll take someone like Akon, for example. He came to America, you know, was, was making music, got millions, went back home, and he actually offered free electricity for his people. I mean, we could commend that, right? We could commend that. So clearly there are people who have the means and are able to benefit the people of Africa. If you knew that they needed water, why didn't you build the wells? So why even be mad that someone is out there trying to actually do some good? Again, I don't really care about what agenda that Mr. Beast has. But hey, if you were ever desperate of water, I don't think you care who's serving you the bottle of water. I don't care if it's the Chinese man, the white man, or the black man. Well, of course, online, everyone sounds off on things. We actually saw some activists agreeing with parts of the criticism. With, for example, in a CNN report, them pointing to one aspiring Kenyan politician who accused Mr. Beast of playing into a stereotype. Okay, Africa is dependent on handouts. Okay, it, let's say it's not true. But who else is... Go how are you going to rewrite the story? If you don't want to be viewed as the person that is relying on handouts, then be the person that actually affects change. Look, you guys, it gets so tired. It gets really tired. I mean, this is, you know, this is what's so crazy too, right? I remember this is the same bogus bullshit that happened when Mr. Beast, I believe he was helping people receive their eyesight. I mean, he was literally helping people receive their eyesight and this guy was the devil. <laughs> look, and mind you, in this, I hope this is not coming across as the person who's trying to make, you know, Mr. Beast seem to be like some type of messiah. I don't think that's what it is. But, again, all he's doing is being a positive influence in this world. I mean, sure, he's filming it. I mean, but that's how YouTubers make their money. I mean, it's, it's actually quite genius. He's helping people. He's filming himself help people. And then by him putting it on YouTube, which is a free platform, by the way. I mean, you don't got to pay to watch the show. 
You get what I'm saying? You just watch his shows for free and he generates a bunch of income through YouTube AdSense. You, you get what I'm saying? Or whatever other means. So, I mean, it's, philatro- it's philanthropic. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? This guy, he's it, it's literally a well-oiled machine to the point where literally he is given back by the very same content that he's actually producing. I mean, it's literally genius. It's literally genius. Again, that's not me trying to say that Mr. Beast is the savior or he's the messiah. No, but I mean, he's helping people out. And yet people, you can't win. You can never satisfy people. So in addition to that, CNN talked to the founder and CEO of the water infrastructure organization, Face Africa, who said, I've been doing this for 15 years, but we've been struggling to continue the work because funding, awareness, and advocacy all take work. And adding, overnight, this person comes along who happens to be a white male figure with a huge platform, and all of a sudden, he gets all of the attention. It's kind of frustrating, but it's also understanding the nature of how the world is. And with that saying, it was good that Mr. Beast installed these wells, but also adding that doing it sustainably is what matters. We're arguing that it's one thing to install wells and another to actually have them working five years from now. With their organization Face also going on to explain so much more of the wider con- okay so it's not <laughs> you, you see how undermining this chick was it's a it's one thing to build the world but it's another thing for it to have to, for it to be running for the next five years okay i mean does he have to do everything i mean how about you guys work together i mean he's funding the building of the wells if 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 the wells matter to you so damn much right how about you support Mr. Beast, work together, and actually help maintain the wells for the next five years? I mean, does he have to do everything? You see, it's so. this is what I'm saying. You, you're damned if you do, and you're damned if you don't. It, it, you see, do you know how many people are criticized for doing nothing at all? I mean, we have a whole bunch of men, both black and white. Who are filthy rich. Matter of fact, matter of fact let's talk, talk about that topic, right? What about all these black millionaires? Billionaires. Jay-Z. Oprah. You get what I'm saying? You have all the Beyonce. Who you name it. Well, how come they didn't go back to Africa and build those wells? No, no. So it's you're going to get on the white man. Right? But like I said, you see, rather than dividing each other by race, which is the powers that be, that's all they care about anyway. Us being continual pawns in this puppet show that they're playing, right? We're a bunch of pawns on the ch- on the chessboard. How about we actually use common sense? How about we actually band together as a group of people? Oh, man, you put up the money to build the walls? Okay, so what funds have you been saving all this time? Use those funds for the maintenance of the well. You see, th- this is what I'm saying. I just don't get it. But these are people who are combative they have no solutions. And when people actually do provide solutions, like they want to crucify them. That's what I'm saying. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. It's the consequences that come from not having access to water, right? Because beyond causing serious illness, it prevents children from getting an education because they need the help with water retrieval. This is something that disproportionately impacts girls and women as they're seen as the ones in charge of managing water and cooking and cleaning with Faces website adding. The lost number of potential school days in education hinders the next generation of African women from breaking out of the cycle of unequal opportunity for gainful employment. With safe water nearby, women are free to pursue new economic opportunities and improve their families' lives. Also, in this situation, you have others arguing that this whole controversy highlights far more than just the issues with water in African countries, right? some pointing to larger issues with income inequality. And understandably, while a number of places have this issue, a lot of the focus was on Kenya, as that's where a lot of Mr. B's video took place. And actually with that, CNN pointed to a Kenyan activist who suggested that Mr. B's video brought shame to the country, right? saying leaders get grants for cars, but somehow there's no money to drill more holes for wells so people can have drinking water. And actually to dive into that, you had Reuters doing a report back in 2018, noting that while Kenya's economy had grown roughly 5% annually over the last decade, it has not been equally distributed and has made the gap between the rich and the poor wider. And this is a small minority of Kenyans receive the wealth and it's not trickled down. My point exactly. My point exactly. You see, we, we try to paint Africa as this poor place, right? They're not. <laughs> They're not. Matter of fact, the truth be told, I believe the statistics prove, as they mentioned, that Kenya, which is only one country in Africa, but Africa as a whole, is actually doing pretty good. It's actually, do- you see, this is what it is. Because of propaganda, they literally show you the worst of the worst in Africa. They show you, you know, the impoverished children that are starving. You get what I'm saying? Look, all of Africa is not indicative of the very few commercials that you see where they try to get you for your money. No, there's a lot of beautiful places in Africa. There's a lot of places in Africa with very good infrastructure, 
right? So all of Africa is not poor, but what's the point, right? With all these people in Africa that are actually flourishing, then why is that the income gap between the rich and the poor is actually getting bigger? Why is the disparity between the rich and the poor getting greater by the year? You know what I'm saying? This is the stuff that they don't want to address. So now when you have someone like a Mr. Beast who actually is doing what they probably could have done themselves, they literally could have done this on their own. But you see, this is what it is, right? Because of greed, you have a whole bunch of people. They don't really care about the people. No, no, they care about lining up their filthy pockets. And look, I'm not here to paint this broad picture and say this is all of African. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is that if you truly care about the people, your people in Africa, it, you would not care about who, whether white, black, yellow, brown, whatever. You would not care who is the source of your help. You just be grateful for the help. I mean, black people in America have been crying for years. Reparations, reparations, reparations. Okay, now you finally get in reparations or at least some form of assistance to some degree. And now you want to complain about that too. Can, can you believe that? This is what I'm saying. It does not make sense. And I, they, they brought up a point about the children, right? Like the, the girls in particular, right? Do you know how tasking it is? You see, some of you are so fortunate to be born. I was born in America too, but I've heard the stories of my parents who were born in Haiti, right? And this is one thing that you don't understand. Do you know how far you have to travel to actually obtain water? And again, a lot of times water retrieval fell upon the women. So now these women had to travel these long distances, sometimes three hours, one way, just one way. So you're traveling six hours in total just to retrieve water and you got to carry buckets of water, which is heavy as shit, on your head just to bring it home so that you could cook, you could bathe yourself, you could do whatever you need to do, right? And this is what's so crazy about it. When do they find time, these women, right, to go to school? You see, by doing this, now you don't even understand how many women are actually benefiting. You know, the, the closest thing I could think about was one time I was in an economic class and the professor was actually explaining, do you know what was one of the best inventions? One of the best inventions was the washing machine. Do you know how huge of a game changer the washing machine is? Again, going back to that three hour scenario. If I had been going three hours one way just so you can wash your clothes, you have a machine that can be placed in your house where now you can clean your clothes, right? And it could be on autopilot. You just press that button and you can walk and do other tasks. Do you know how much of a game changer that is? That is pretty much these wells. It's a game changer. And rather than bitching, rather than moaning and complaining, you should just be grateful. I Look... These people, I guarantee you, they're not the ones complaining. You, the, the, the people that are complaining are all these activists who want their name, <laughs> you get what I'm saying, to be po posted up as this savior. You see, they want to blame Mr. Beast. Oh, he's trying to present himself as the white savior. Well, they're trying to present themselves as the black savior. Or oh, I'm the one that helped Africa. No, 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 no. How about we? We come together and try to help the people of the world. You get what I'm saying? As a whole. Right? It could be Africa today. Maybe tomorrow. It could be Asia. But what I'm saying is that how about we come together as a human, as the human race? Anyway, this is wishful thinking. It's not going to happen any damn way. So I, I believe, believe me, this is all wishful thinking. I'm just trying to talk about in the context of this video. It's all nonsense that these people are literally mad at a man that has chosen to use his money. When there's some people have that hasn't done anything. I well, I mean, I haven't heard anything special that Elon Musk have done. I haven't heard anything special that Jeff Bezos have done. I mean, yeah, they have products that they continue to sell, but what have they done in terms of actually trying to benefit a group of people? You have Mr. Beast again. He has cured many people of horrible eyesight. I didn't even know about the death. You get what I'm saying? The loss of hearing. So he's helped people in that avenue as well. And now he's building wells in Africa. I mean, again, I don't know his agenda. Who knows? Even if it was cynical, even if he was maniacal in the background, the people that are receiving the water, I'm sure they don't give two shits. They just here 
Thank you for the water. And they, that they, that that's it's a game changer for these people. It literally changes their lives. Anyway, I would like to hear what you guys think about the whole situation. Do you think that you know Mr. Beast has <laughs> maniacal, uh, you know, devious ulterior motives by doing all this philanthropic um, activities, or do you think that he's actually a genuine guy? famous youtuber that is just trying to help out as best as he can i would love to hear your comments down below but with that being said nick over and out the message sent jesus is king y'all